there is still some breeze down there and that may be a factor again 21 years old from Buenos Aires and that's where she still lives and has a place also here on Keepers Gate. This afternoon was very windy here, and I expected it by now to be a little bit calmer, and it is, but not much. The wind is still apparently going to be a factor. I think I think it has helped. Uh, the Grof says there's nothing to the notion that uh, Sabatini's got an edge over her in the state of Florida. I think it helps an awful lot that the fans get so far behind Sabatini, the South American fans that live in this area. We saw right away from Groff, though, that it was that interesting. On the very second point of this match, she already tried to, to make a play against Sabatini from the net. And hopefully that she missed that shot won't, won't keep her from, from doing that more. It's something she's wanted to be building in her game the last few months now. And she needs it. Good. Great lob. Watch the win. Nearly brought it back in, but not far enough. Sabatini comes to the net much, with, uh, much more ease than Steffi Groff. It's how she won herself her first Grand Slam title, the U.S. Open, in 1990. Played the last two rounds of the U.S. Open from the net. And in fact beat the server in the final. Sellers did not play Wimbledon last year. These two battled it out in the final, and what a match that was. So close. Won eventually by Graf, her major title of the year, of course. Her only Grand Slam. The others were won all by Monica Sellers. In fact, look, Sabatini in 1991 beat Steffi Groff four times and when they got to Wimbledon Sabatini served twice for the match so she really has turned the tables of this rivalry in fact that was the last time they played eight six in the third that one was <laughs> Sabatini has won a Grand Slam championship but only one that was the US Open in 19 Break point, first game. First game and a break is served to the Argentine. One game to love, first set. We'll be back. First game. Mention what the heck Fred happened to Fred, hadn't it? Singing the same thing. Four or five. Semi finals of the Lipton 92, women's division, Graf trailing Sabatini, uh -huh. one love. A break is here. Right away, Sabatini declares herself and shows Graf that she's going to be in her face at the net as much as possible. Although we must say that of the five points played in game one, Steffi Graf committed four unforced errors. So she's going to have to turn that around. We're in the state of Florida where they're not sure at one point that they wanted to be a state. They went so far as to wave flags emblazoned, let us alone. But finally, in 1845, they agreed to join the union. At that time, only 60,000 people lived here. Now, over 42 million people have Florida as their winter vacation destination. One game to love, 17. <laughs> Drop had it easy for the first couple of rounds of this championship. As you can see, things got a little heated, though, in the fourth round against the fine young Japanese player, Kimiko Date. That one went to three. And in the quarter, she straight to Mary Jo Fernandez. For the eighth time.
Sabatini's road to the semis really looks quite a bit different. In, in fact, things actually got very easy for her by the time she got to the quarters against Amy Frazier. You can see she just took her out, giving up only one game. Her only real problem was against the very hard-hitting Brenda Schultz, who for one set gave her all kinds of problems. 15 all. fiery one with the Australian accent, you know, Fred Stolle. He's taking the night off tonight. After his performance this afternoon, we let him take a break. I'm kind of semi-producing today, so if you like the show, the name is Drysdale. If you don't like it, there's a guy by the name of Williams that you might want to contact. Fred is in better voice tomorrow. He's got a frog in his throat. Sabatini has a break already. Single most vulnerable part of Sabatini's game. Right in the middle of your screen in the black cap is Carlos Kiermaier, who took over the reins, the coaching reins of Gabriela Sabatini. Two years ago, after the French Open, said, look at you, you, can, you are such a natural. You can play from anywhere on the court, you should do it. He convinced her to play like this. Very solid. And obviously she can because she can make shots like that. Great volley. A firmly punched volley and then a drop volley for the winner. The first big tournament that Kiermaier coached Sabatini was at Wimbledon and he told her in preparation for Wimbledon that the, the ball dies on the grass. In fact, this little drop volley is, has, is a pet shot of hers. She used it so much at her first Wimbledon serving and volleying and it, it worked very well for her. She sometimes goes to that a little bit too much, I feel. It's the first volley she really grew comfortable with. It worked well there. Well, Grop should be climbing all over any kind of Sabatini serve that's only coming in at 66 miles an hour. And that's the one big chance for Grop to attack. That right. is the easiest single shot you get from Sabatini all night long. Another break point, and that's Heinz Gunthard. He's Steffi Grop's new coach from Switzerland. This match, of course, takes on not Monica Sellers, as is usually the case, but Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. There's the break back. It's one game more. Now, this is what Heinz Gunthard, Ross, new coach of the last few months, has told her to do, too. He's told her, you know, set it up with your big forehand and then get to the net, finish it there. And again, though she's still reluctant to do it, she does a fine job in that point. comfortable up there is she uh, Gabriella Sabatini we're talking about a drop volley earlier Mary and it, it's very often true that those who are not used to volleying will vo drop volley the ball you know play it loose wristed because they don't have that firm volley
15 all. Groff was a little bit fortunate that Sabatini kept poking the ball to the backhand side. Of course, that's what everyone says to do against Steffi Groff. She hasn't been rolling over her topspin, her backhand. So, but I, I think in this case, maybe she erred because Groff had left open an awful lot of forehand court. 30 30. Still on the subject of volleys, though, Steffi Groff is just not comfortable yet volleying. She's not a natural volleyer. Maybe because she's done so little of that coming to the net. Out. Like a player like Bjorn Borg, for example, who was also not a net rusher, they can still win on grass with just big ground strokes. Yes. Oh. He got to be a pretty good volleyer at Wimbledon, though, oh, yeah. too, didn't he? I mean, you can't win that five times without not taking the ball in the air. Mainly it was his serve that improved so much. So that turned things around, didn't two in a row for Graf. She lost her first serve game. We're on serve now, two games to one, first set. Semi-finals. We'll be back. Two games to one, Graf first set. Graf has got to have a lot of strength as successful as she has been. Let's take a look at them. Well, you can't, you obviously can't, uh, can't look at her game without thinking about her forehand, her wonderful foot speed around the court, and that she's got a very, very strong first serve. The weaknesses, and, and she's trying to do something new tonight, something different, is that she does have limited tactics. You know pretty much how she's going to play you. Her backhand has been attackable for the last couple of years, and she's been running hot and cold as well. She hasn't been as confident in her game, and it shows the arrogance when it goes out of her shots. She then gets quite tentative and quite afraid of you know, making mistakes. Her strengths, uh, again, we've been speaking of the stroke variety that we see from her. She can really play every part of the court. She's become more aggressive, and she's become a lot fitter. But it's this part of her game right here that is still suspect, her serve. Especially when she misses that first one. And those second serves. It's really, there's st it's, it's rare when she's really got a lot on it. And of course, Groff's got a very large return game. Of 30. This year, and then the Virginia Slims of Florida, she beat Conchita Martinez last week. Break point.
and broke Ball twice. Three, one. The trouble spot for Sabatini is the serve, and it allowed Groff to take charge of the points early. Eight straight points, in fact. Groff has won, and her mom, Heidi, has got to be liking what she's seeing so far. There's Steffi's agent, Phil DiPicciato, in the white shirt. And Heinz Gundogt. Then Graf gets the short ball, and instead of just powdering it back and staying on the baseline, she's in at the net to finish things. 15 low. The reason that she started playing so late was uh, because, remember at the Australian Open when we were down there, she left. Uh, with uh, what she thought was something very serious. Turned out to be something that's in the Carilla household, I understand, a little chicken pox. And, uh, and combined with the flu, and she got to the airport in Germany. And she was, and almost her entire body was puffed up, all her joints swollen. But they diagnosed what the problem was, and she's fine. She actually hasn't stayed too healthy in the last few years, has she? No. There's injuries, uh, allergies, uh, broken thumb last year. This is the most forward playing tennis from Steffi since since I watched her since Wimbledon last year. Remember, and on grass she knew she had to come in more than she'd like. Graf lost to never to live in the US Open final. She won three tournaments in a row. Again, she went for that drop volley. These two played here last year, remember, Graf got off to a good start. But it was two sets. Sabatini won at 7-6. And then 6-1 in the last two sets. We'll be back after this. Nice cleanup, but it doesn't say it there, but remember she took the first set yeah. six love and we thought, whoa. Yeah. But I said that Graf got off to a good he, start because I remember up, that she did. Yeah. cleaned it up. Well, good, good catch. Thank you. Right, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. So Steffi Graf starts out this match and she loses her first serve game and then suddenly four games in a row and she leads it four games to one. They have an interesting history, Mary, as we have been talking about these two. They really do. This is the first time they've played this year. Remember last year's match, Graf had the same kind of great start against Sabatini. Took the first set at love and we all thought, this is an amazing blowout that's happening. But Sabatini fought back very, very well. We mentioned six of the seven times they played in Florida. It has been Gabby, and that's a little unusual. 
And the first 11 times they played, it was all Groff. We're on the island of Key Biscayne, just off Miami, Florida. This is Lipton 92 women's semifinal. Sabatini serving now to Groff, trailing 1-4, first set. here this week have been from the uh, really the, other than the first uh, session when it rained on the first Friday of the tournament 12 of the last 15 points have gone to growth unbelievable really because the only game she lost she had four on four errors and that was the very first game of the match she never looked back oh. <laughs> Lipton tournament's place in history is secure. They're going to start a major construction effort here just as soon as the tournament is over. The next year, this event will be played in a permanent setting. 30 love. Oh! I like the idea, Cliff, that you know, there, there are a lot of people around here who didn't like the idea environmentally of a big old structure and, and you know, ugly lights at night. So they are developing lights for a night match such as this. There are lights that they're going to be able to take up and down only when they need to put retractable lights. It's a pretty fancy feature. Yeah. An easy hold for Sabatini. Well, it's four two. Four two for set. Yeah, suddenly the lead shrinks. Four one sounds like you've got it wrapped up, and now it's really just one break that Sabatini needs back. This game, and they'll be right back on serve. So look for Sabatini to really be going for it. She has broken once the first game of the match. This allowed her the short reply from Groff allows her to, to finish the point with the big forehand into the short corner. Try to set between 
Yeah, but she'd like to have that again. That drop volley was not well played. If she had just got into the net, she could have put it away very easily. It's but instead, 40, she kind 50. of hesitated. Watch. That's her. exactly right. This this pet volley of her, this it, it just it just sat up entirely too much. Brock was able to take control, and there goes the Sabatini. But she was it was too far behind her. She really didn't get a good didn't get a good look at it. Game point. errors and they have cost Steffi Graf this game is important to her 4-2 if Sabatini can break back here it will be as you said Mary back on serve four unforced errors in the first game match which she lost on her serve since then she has not lost her serve she's broken twice As you'd say, Mary, well-constructed point, exactly what she wanted. She just never put the volley away. Yeah. Uh, she was kind of up in the air a little bit, wasn't she? Mm. She wanted to close in so tight, and she did a pretty good job. Look, she's kind of up in the air when she when she goes for this a little bit awkward of a volley she was trying to make. Kid my ear, you said some nice things about him earlier, and I want to endorse those. He's a very, very gentle, sweet, uh, intelligent, thoughtful guy. Very nice to be around, very friendly, outgoing, gregarious kind of guy. You don't just like him the, at all, do you? Just the kind of guy that somebody like Sabatini needs. <laughs> something to break up this routine, doesn't she? Well, you know what, Cliff? This woman's game was built on confidence. It was built without fear. I mean, that was, Why, you know, it, it was never defense. It was never Thank really fact, factored into the architecture of her game. And for three years, nothing scared her. Now, other players are being aggressive against her. She had power. She had fitness. She had speed. And she never used to lose. Two of three for Graf, one of one for Sabatini. Here's her second. Now power isn't enough to win. Too many others have it. That's out. And too many others are willing to mix it up and take it to Groff. It was a brand new experience, wasn't it, when she started to lose? Because as you said, for so long, 186 weeks or something, Hans Gundhardt now. Coaching her, number one in the world. And I was convinced she was going to win a second Grand Slam. It was one thing, I mean, I, it was one, it's, it's just impossible to believe that uh, she, she did, couldn't, but she didn't.
Groff has been challenged in her service game. Again, four game points. This is her fourth time she's tried to take a 5-2 lead. Peter Groff and Heidi, parents sitting behind the coach. He's going to be traveling less and less with Steppy. She's growing up. She's grown. She's trying to grow a little bit away from her parents, make decisions on her own. in a position like this, uh, Mary, she's really not uh, making up her mind that she has to make a move one way or the I've other. The real great team. volley is no, when they're on the defense like that, even though they're at the net, they have got to go one way or the other. Otherwise, they're just going to stand there and get past. And Graf has Thank not you. learned that yet. Break point. Seven. You mean this could be a pivotal game? Yeah, the, the, yes, the famous, the famous pivotal fifth, uh, seventh game, fifth deuce here. And this, this second swing either way, no two ways about it. On this very game. Both had their chances in this game. Now it's again dead even deuce for two Groff. It's so, it's so nice to see. We know that, that Groff is not doing this easily, coming into the net. And look at that. She had to take that one off her shoe tops. Not an easy volley to be making, especially in this all-important game. She handled it well. She knew she just had to sort of guide it into the open court. She found it. And now for the fifth time, she's trying to serve her way out of this game. This match when it's all over. Five two, first set. I 
Hey, kids, this is a pretty good match. This is a great match. This isn't a bad little match. Oh, good. <laughs> Let it speak for itself, Cliffy. What are you saying now? Jeepers. Get it. What? I do it my way, you do it your way, right? Yeah. Yo, Italy, calm down. Hey, uh, any, uh, you have any interest in, in listening to, uh, to Bud Collins screaming out what's happening here for the radio? He's doing radio work on this match. Yeah. Uh, oh, are you sure? Oh, yeah. time now in Central Europe. It's a.m. so it is kind of, uh, it's kind of late now. time. Right. Ready for play, please. Of course, this coverage is going to Germany. That's exactly what time uh, all well, the East Coasters will Just be watching about. this one. Unbelievable, huh? That? That's looking too good when she misses her first serve is 17. <laughs> we talked about the attackable second serve. I'm, I'm continually amazed at how few players are able, seem able, to really do something with the second ball from Sabatini on serve. Point Sabatini, she's trying to get back here, 5-2 down. Have one more chance to break serve. It's 5-3, now Sabatini will serve for the first set. It's what we've been saying about, about Graf. She's done this all week long. She's been running hot and cold. Osvaldo. Beatrice. Beatrice sitting right behind him. That's uh, Gabby's, Gabby's mom, Hi. Peter and Heidi Graf, Steffi's parents. 5-3.
Crucial couple of points coming up. 15 all. and being given the straightforward pace that she really likes. And when she plays well, she's going for winners. Sabatini isn't giving her exactly the kind of ball she likes to hit. That last one, for instance, she hit a very low backhand. It didn't make it. Good play from Sabatini, just attacking the serve, coming right in backhand side, covering the net, and Groff didn't all over the net and even make her make the volley that time so this is break point you want a nice clean ball if you're Steffi Groff Sabatini's been hitting heavy topspin heavy slice as well <laughs> 98 mile an hour serve caught Sabatini off the hip one break point gone Two of three and one of four for Sabatini. Another chance. Oh, pulled long and it's deuce. Oh boy, she, again, Sabatini did the right thing. She followed a heavy slice with a, with a heavy topspin. And that topspin, believe me, was not out by much. But I tell you what, it looked to her when uh, she hit it from up here, and we we're a long way away. Let me caution you on that. I'll stop calling them from up here, but it looked to me like clipped the line. Deuce. Whoa. Fourth deuce game of this first set. as she was in trying to win her last two serve games. She ended up doing just that and has won the first set. So about the same time that you're watching this a little earlier, tomorrow, One day later, Plasek and Mancini will play for the second semi-final place. Courier and Chang. And that is going to be a terrific match. Jacob Plasek, Alberto Mancini. Plasek from Switzerland, Mancini from Argentina. Remember, he played Davis Cup for Argentina against the U.S. in a losing effort. On the big island of Hawaii, the Mandalani Hotel. First round of the Davis Cup. Second round of the Davis Cup next weekend here on ESPN against Czechoslovakia. 
First game, second set. Right, right from the start, again, as she did in the first game of the first set, Groff tried to take it to 17 at the net, but not well enough. Steffi Groff uh, won a tournament last week here in Florida. Virginia Slims of Florida, by the way. She has never lost to anybody except Gabby Sabatini. Go figure, huh? Sabatini wasn't too close to the net watch, so she figured she had to muscle it a little bit, and she overplayed it. Look where she makes the volley from right around the service line. She wasn't in a good position. She really thought she had to, to do more than just steer it into the court. Break point. Much better position, wasn't it, that time? And she had a little bit more pace to work with. It helps to be positionally correct. And that, I think, Cliff, if, if Groff were to understand that a little bit better, she'd be making more comfortable volleyer, volleys. made a nice solid split step she she wouldn't look so rushed it wasn't a bad shot to approach on but watch she's still moving as she's trying to make this volley and that's difficult that's not an easy thing to do she's you see she's if she were to get there and stop punch the volley and then continue forward she'd have more control it'll come though if she's willing to do that in this big a match I almost feel clip in a way, maybe this is overstating the case, but I feel it would be better for Grop to lose this match from the net than to win it from the baseline. So I honestly feel that in this year, and that's Sabatini's first double fault, in this year of women's tennis, Grop finally has decided that she needs more game. And the only way you gain confidence is to have a big win in a big match. Heinz Gunhardt has been trying to tell her this kind of stuff. That, uh, she has just got to build on her game, doesn't she? She's played the same way for so long, and 
now, as you mentioned earlier. Others have caught up with her. Deuce, first game, second set. She's being helped out by Sabatini tonight, by the way. Gabby is, is spraying shots at that really, I mean, she's not being terribly pressured by some of these shots and she's missing them. She's normally a lot more consistent off the ground. Great point. She doesn't go for as much. And she hits with more spin. Badly unforced error that time off the backhand side. Again, she wasn't going for anything and hit it wide nevertheless. Deuce again. like a couple of volleys back, Sabatini, when she really could have ended it. She just kind of poked the, one of her volleys back into the court and gave Steffi another swing. There's very little between these two, even though Grop has secured the first set. All of these points are, are weighty. You see three? Mm hmm. <laughs> Who was that, Sarah? What am I got on three here? Clippy says three. I said three. But then again, that's just Clippy. All right. Six three first set, Seb uh, Graf rather, and Graf won the first game of the second set. Here, Mary Carilla is the story, as Dr. Leo Levin sees it. Yeah, well, the good doctor keeps it, keeps us in mind of the fact that Sabatini was only successful once out of five chances to break, and that Graf, the time she's come to the net, ten doesn't sound like too much, perhaps, but seven out of ten times she got it right. Important. The unforced errors, again, uh, we're used to seeing a lot of unforced errors from Groff because she has a very high-risk game, but that's an awful lot from Sabatini, who does not. One to nothing, Groff is going to hesitate for a moment while some folks behind Sabatini take their seats. What I call the tingle factor for Groff as far as coming to the net is concerned. She's just, just not confident enough to get in yet. As you say, Mary, I'm inclined to agree with you. She's got to just go in there and find out how she does. And if she knew it was 7 out of 10, she'd realize the percentages are on her side. Rate extremely high. 
and there's not enough of a payoff on the winning side. shot so late she found the short court see some an argentine flag there as you say they've been very very noisy for sabatini she is incredibly popular down here that's uh, it's a little uh, it's sort of bad manners that steffi graf got the uh, applauded for double faulting, but as we say, and that's her second double fault, it's a very uh, pro-Spanish, it's a very Spanish-speaking crowd down here. How do you like that, following us a double fault with a good-looking ace? But she's still in trouble. Break point. Two more. There are an awful lot of Spanish-speaking fans here tonight. They were they were out here for Arancha Sanchez Vicario earlier today, who, after beating Gabriel, uh, after beating Jennifer Cabriotti, said, "It's Father's Day today in Spain, and so I offer up this win for my father." When she won the French Open, she took her mother's maiden name. <laughs> Nice way to start game three. Sabatini pulling Roth wide and then ripping a forehand winner. She'll try to be more aggressive in this set. round coverage of the Vintage Arco Invitational. It's on the Senior PGA Tour, of course, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and then 6 p.m. tomorrow and on Sunday. Final round coverage at 5.30 p.m. Lee Trevino, Gary Player, Gigi Rodriguez is the defending champion. Spend that much energy in a point. Have the ball on your racket to end things and just punch it a little bit long, but that's exactly what happened. So Sabatini serve again under the gun. Game point. 40 30. 
mentioning that Sabatini is the hometown favorite here, but in fact, Sefi Groff spends an awful lot of her time when she's in the States in Boca Raton. 63 mile an hour serve got slapped back a lot faster, it seems, than 63 miles an hour. Clean winner. sees a short ball, punishes it away. Talked about all the uh, folks here for Sabatini. There are a number of Germans as well in Florida at this time of the year to escape the rather bitter winter that they have down there. But uh, you can hardly hear them. Very few by comparison. There are a couple. Sports in Europe, of course, and watch this boom. Australian Opens in all. She has won the French Championships twice, Wimbledon twice, and the US Open twice. Her oh. so last Grand Slam win was Wimbledon. of Florida just about a year ago. Monica Sellis has been there ever since. <laughs> 186 weeks altogether. No person, man.
shot there from Lamartini. In Virginia Slim's rankings, Juan Caselas, of course, is on top. So Graf is number two. Then Sabatini, never to love uh, Sanchez Vicario. Now, had Jennifer Capriati beaten Sanchez Vicario today, she would have taken over that number five spot. But as it stands now, she'll stay at six, followed by Mary Jo Fernandez, Conchita Martinez, who's had a terrific last month in women's tennis, Willa Maleva Frontier, and Yana Novotna at 10. Oh, yes. So Graf holds on and then she has a three game to one lead. Important game this for Steffi Graf. Important match rather. Watch this again. Now just watch the way that she puts this one down the line. Keep your eyes on uh, the Argentinian. She stays in the middle and you'd have thought that she would have tried to track this forehand down the line because it was pretty much the only way that Graf could have gone. Running forehand will normally go down the line. Unless you John McEnroe. Eight of thirteen on net points. Sabatini's come in twice as much almost. Shows how on drops passing shots have been tonight. She's getting there in plenty of time and really giving the, the ball a good ride. Sabatini, I think, has, has missed a couple of key drop volleys. week at the Virginia Slims of Florida just before this tournament where she lost in an upset to Amanda Kutzer of South Africa and she said she was strangely tired in that match couldn't get her legs going She really, uh, she's playing pretty well this year. Took a title in Sydney and the Pan Pacific. Tokyo. Back in January. Okay, point. Serve for Groff, she'll serve when we well, come back. She won the first set and she's leading three games to two in the second. Stay with us. Two with a break in the second. She's about to serve this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Second round coverage of the standard register ping, the LPGA tour stop. Starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and then on Sunday, final round coverage again at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Patty Sheehan, Jan Stevenson, Amy Alcott, Pat, Br Pat Bradley, Beth Daniel very good field there for that, so I hope you'll stay tuned to ESPN for women's golf this weekend. Arca Vintage Classic as well, senior men's PGA. Open also was a bridesmaid, got to the final and lost to Steffi Graf. That was the year that Graf won the Grand Slam, so these two had to play for it. Graf had to win that match to win it all. Graf was relieved that day. Those 
days, of course, she had Gabby Sabatini's number. That's the third double fault. The Grove. Grove. Chances to come to the net there. Played a good lob over her head, but off the backhand side, it showed just how tentative she is about hitting the passing shot because she could have hit one either cross court or down the line. But I don't remember, Mary, but I haven't seen her hit a top spin backhand all night. Couple. Sabatini had a chance at her to end that round, that point with a volley, and she didn't do enough enough with it, Cliff. She's had a couple like that where you, you kind of want to want her to give it a better nudge. the riskiest looking Third back end in the world there but I tell you what it, it, it just is it's beautifully executed take a look at this again you see it, it looks like there's a lot of wrist in that shot in fact she keeps a very firm wrist when she makes contact with it and that's the secret of how she's able to control that back end break point Only been two of seven in breakpoint chances. Now two of eight. You cannot ever, in any case, uh, say that Sabatini didn't do the right thing there. She came into the net. She should have done. Put the pressure on Groff, but she was up to it. Watch this again. Yeah, Sabatini's up at the net, but Groff is getting a good look at the passing shots. Isn't she? Yep. Had time. She had time there to dictate, even, even though she was on the baseline. be taking a toll on both players because they're really they're both throwing themselves all over the court trying to find the edge and Sabatini giving a pretty weak lob smashes it away it's still in these very critical deuce games that go back and forth it's Groff who's who's been able to decide them much more often what that means of course is she's been playing the big points better tonight Second serve, break point. Sabatini to do. Ladies and gentlemen, please be as quiet as you can during the playing of the Great game. effort from Groff. She's pulled wide here and knows that she really has to go for a winner. It's a desperation shot. 
It had to connect. She went for it all and it paid off. The chair has called for more quiet during the points, but these fans are hot wired to the rackets of both players. Very involved in this match. Especially this woman's racket. Sabatini had put a little roll on it, but no, it was drop was there. Volley, you're right. This is break point again, though. Another big point chance for Sabatini. Break back. Yeah, there's a break back. Look, and it's really the first time we, we keep talking big points and how Groff has been outplaying Sabatini. This is really the first big point that she just gave away. You can see there wasn't a lot of follow through on that serve. She stopped the racket speed entirely Why, too early. Why, please? Thank you. Semi-final played earlier today, won by Arantxa Sanchez Vicario and her tactics. She beat Jennifer Capriati and her execution, her big game style. What we're seeing here is another, another match. Tactics from Sabatini against execution from Groff, but Groff is also spicing up with some volleying variety of her own. We've seen a lot of this tonight, haven't we? A sitter serve punished by Steffi Groff.
Ok, bueno. vamos Gabi, vamos Gabi. Keep his skin safe. Keep his skin resident safe. Looks like a little treasure map. I kind of like that. That's what they think of Gabby down here. Vamos, Gabby. Kibis Kane says, of course, she has a We're place here in Kibis Kane. Spend a lot of time here. Why wouldn't she? Beautiful weather, lovely climate, a lot of water sports, easy to get in and out of Miami, and from the airport, probably 20 minute drive. And on a good traffic day, less than that. Seven of the nine lost points. Some fan support for Graf as well, as you can hear. 30 love. Gabby's been serving these up to Groff. She gets one herself, a pretty punishable 71 mile an hour second serve roundhouse swing winner. Steffi Graf won the first set and a break in the second set, first game, and held that until 3 2. Then she got broken back. Sabatini and all the others who try to attack Raw from the net will continue to go to the backhand well on their approach shots until Groff starts hitting something more than slice. Still the way to go. of paper obviously flew out on the court in the middle of that rally. I noticed it and Seppi certainly did as well. And perhaps for a fraction of a moment it distracted her. In any event, she did lose that point. Top one long. So 30 love for Sabatini. Plenty of breeze out there tonight. Stuff is going to fly around. A little bit of bad luck I'd say for Brock.
Didn't move her feet at all. Ball just came to him. It's like she was glued to the ground. A little fatigue, maybe. Oh, you have lapses sometimes. Four games, all 30 15. Covered well the very next point. Another pretty tough rally from both players, and bang, cold winner out of pretty much nowhere. You know, she had she had Graf going to the back. She kept going to Graf's backhand so often. That one surprised her that Sabatini went the other way. Oh yeah, great return. Game point still 40-30. Going to the point again. That time it was a mistake. Tried to keep Groff's forehand as cold as possible in this match. And as we said, it has been running hot and double cold. Fall. A double. Yeah. Ooh, a key double fault, her third of the match, but at a very, very big moment. And all of a sudden, a pretty comfortable service game has, has gone away. Four double faults for Groff, three for Sabatini. See if she pays the price for that double. She wins the next two points in the game, so it's five games to four. Sabatini, second Sabatini set. Sabatini leads 5 4. Steffi Groff will serve, so we are on serve in the second set. First set to Groff, 6 3. Senti. Se quattro, se dos, se duo. Okay, what is it? What is it? Shut up. Yeah. Really? Okay. No, for sure. So, do I get some? Where do you bet? Where? You call and make it bet? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do a pro. Uh, excuse me, uh, Brian, do a pro. No, let's go. No commercial, God damn it, no commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Next weekend here, USA and Czechoslovakia in the second round of the Davis Cup, the US of Argentina in the first round from Hawaii. We'll be in Florida for this one, March 27th, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, live coverage. And then, as you can see, the other times, 28th, 29th, and 30th.
Graf serving, trailing five, four second set. Graf was serving better in set one. That's why her her time at the service line was easier. It's fallen a bit in set two, and it's given Sabatini some chances to break. And here comes another look at a second serve. Percentages, Mary. Yeah, as, as I was saying, in the first set, she kept it pretty good at 63%. She's been missing more than half of her first serves in this set. She's ahead. This game, 30 low. serve it out for five all. Five games all, second set. Okay, two games potentially from the match for Graf. She won the first set 6-3. I'm wondering if either one of these players is remembering the match played here one year ago. Groff took the first set, but Sabatini took the second in a tie break and won the third 6-1 and totally deflated Groff. So close to winning the match. Just disappeared by set three. Same court, same round. Pretty much the same kind of match shaping up too. Sabatini, after getting clips in the first round, showed so much tenacity. That is a great passing shot from Graf, so look out this time. 15-30 with Sabatini serving. Broken once. In fact, they've traded breaks. One break in the That clip, you were looking around for the Graf topspin backhand. Kind of a beauty, huh? Mm -hmm. Had a pretty, pretty large moment of the match. Yeah. Nice to see that shot back. She mothballed it for a while, Steffi Groff. We haven't seen too many of those at all in the last few years. Steffi Groff in the last couple of 
the years has faced so much more power than she was ever used to before. From people like Sabatini, Celis, Capriati. Yeah, I still think that she shouldn't have closeted it though, kept it out there, hit the she's, But she's just been rushed, hasn't yeah. she? She just hasn't had time to set up. She hasn't been dictating as she did for three solid years. There do you Came over that one too, grafted on the backhand, but it was right down the middle, and Sabatini had no trouble putting it away. Not only was it right down the middle, Cliff, but it was high. This wasn't really that tough a volley for Sabatini. Make look at her contact point there. Okay, point. <laughs> of a lot of people in the crowd as you can hear. Second serve. She could break before then. Six games to five. First set drop. He was a nice man. <laughs> is, this a, is this something that you probably have you ever seen this? Have you ever used one of these things? Um, hey Brian, a little suggestion if, in fact, Sabatini does win this um, yeah, game, we might want to bring back the font, or, so or I'm not sure that the graphic is built about game. last year's match. We just discussed it. After uh, losing the first set and taking the tiebreaker, she beat Groff 6-1 in the third. This was from uh, this, <laughs> this tournament a year ago. Thank you, sir. We're going to play some golf on, on Tuesday, huh? Oh, God, that's a terrible grip, I can tell already. Keep your back straight. Uh, Jeez, you live just like me. It's terrible. I can't believe it. It's awful. That's my, my imitation of Brian imitating Cliff. <laughs> yeah? I can't believe it. time in this match, isn't it? Six games to three, Graf first set. Now Sabatini has a 6-5 lead. We're on serve. This is Graf to serve. But uh, at this point, I would not bet against Sabatini for the set. She has two chances, the break and then the tie break. stronger wrist just put it right back in play easy passing shot top shot we used to see that from australia i think why please during the point thank you the thing is from this from this position you don't have a lot of power you need angle and sabatini wasn't able to achieve any kind of 
a difficult angle for Groff. Fifteen. Second ace, and though it was not struck terribly hard, it could not have been better placed. It looks like it scooted off both the sideline and the service line. Two aces. Well played. Tiebreaker, second set. Some idiot falling out there from Six the side. And, uh, Top shot, as I said, we saw some of that from uh, from Australia, as I remember, or from Europe somewhere. Anyway, it was a top shot from Graf, and she holds on six games all tiebreaker, second set, first set to Graf, first to seven, to two point lead. When is the tiebreaker? Graf decided another important shot at the net tonight. 11 of 18 times she's been successful at the net. Those are pretty good numbers. Some more numbers. Sabatini has won six of the 10 times they've played tie breaks. Come in behind enough, did she? One zero draw. The slice backhand that didn't have an awful lot of bite, nor did it have any kind of length to worry Gra. Last weekend, it was a weekend before that. Virginia from the buckle return. She won five matches there. She's already won four matches here, Steffi Groff. So she's definitely on a bit of a roll. Started out winning the first two points, mini break, and then she got broken back, so it's two points all in the tie break. Now both players taking their time. Pleasant conditions, a little humid, some breeze, not much. It's not a factor anymore. Thank you. 
Sabatini. Try to volley. Scroft gave, gave that backhand a very nice angled ride. Sabatini trying to scoop it up and hit a very delicate volley. Came off that forehand, didn't she? Yeah, what an opportunity she had too, because it was a very easy forehand. She had a good look at it, not rushed in any way. Yeah, uh, she just uh, she got nervous on it. Four five. Shot. She made it here. Keep your eye here Six on Sabatini. Four, she Sabatini. comes into the net now. At this stage, she doesn't know where the ball's going, but she moves to the right. Four, and she three. guesses correctly and it makes for not an easy volley, but a certainly makeable volley, and she made it. So set point, Sabatini. She had a good look at that one, Six, too. Five, seven,
it. The set is history. The Sabbath TV and this match is beginning to look more and more like what happened here just 12 months ago when Brock won the first set. Sabatini won the tiebreaker in the second, and then in the third set it was all Sabatini. We'll find out. Third set coming up. It's one set all in this match. Stay with us. the first set tie break in the second there it is again Mary yeah the, again keep in mind that this is the second time they've played at the Lipton last year as you mentioned Grop was two points from the match in the tiebreaker last year against Sabatini she lost it 8-6 in that tiebreaker and totally went away in set three she was very demoralized let's see what happens in this set this year Sabatini chases this one down and covers it down the line. She had committed herself. She could not possibly turn around in time to guard against the cross court. Dirty love. Nearly two hours old in this match. Two sets played. Oh! Sabatini is fearless compared to Graf. Game plan and she's sticking to it. What happened in that second set? Peter Groff says to Heidi. What happened there? Tie break? smoking when Sabatini won the US Open.
juice. Ten for Sabatini. Singles here at the Lipton 92. We're playing to play against the Rancho Sanchez Vicar. Zenti. Kids. What? Yeah, because of his voice. Yeah, did you hear? He cannot speak. The story of the second set looks pretty even, doesn't it? <laughs> it couldn't have been much closer. Only two point difference between the two. They both had the same number of winners and they both had the same number of breaks. One in the tie break, Kerr by Sabatini. Third set, Mary might have done it, broken the back of Steffi Graf in this match. Fifteen love. Crowd are into it now more than they were at the early stages of the match. We Graf won the first set. Two-handed swings when the point is over in this match that I've seen watched with some interest because there was a time when she was considering hitting with two hands Why, to compete with the likes of Monica Sellis. 
but Here. bagged that idea, which was a good thing. Eight straight points. Yeah, down love 40, first game of the final set. It looked as though Groff was going to come off to a nice, clean third set start. But Gabby came roaring back. Graf's got to think she's reliving her, you know, her, yeah. her nightmare from one year ago. Yeah. This is amazing. She was two points from the match. Yeah. The same exact match in 1991, just as she was here tonight. And now she's going to try to have to hit her way out of trouble. has become, if not a hostile atmosphere, very pro Sabatini crowd. See, she's just getting into the net, and uh, there's not a heck of a lot that Steffi Graf can do about it. I mean, even the approach shots may not be that good, but she's tall and she's got a good reach. And Graf is having trouble making the passing shots. Now, in the first set, she was making them. But that has changed. Yeah, that last passing shot looked pretty feeble compared with some of the stuff blazing off her racket in set one. still contend that one of the reasons Sabatini has beaten her so many times in Florida, six out of the seven they've played, is the fan support. I think Sabatini can be inspired. Game point draw. Something to be happy about. It's too late. It's too late now. Steffi Groff taking on Gabriella Sabatini. We're in the third set, two games to one. She is struggling now, Groff. 
with the break. Sabatini serving. that Joan Bornbaum is going to call something from, from her chair. It was fairly close, but just from where Groff, Groff is going to have a chat with her. This will not lead anywhere, except that Groff is making her point. Yep, I think she's right. Joan Vaughnbaum in the chair tonight. Fifteen love. <laughs> Mary, it's just uh, you know, return like that. There's not that much on the ball. Slice bottom of the net. No real explanation for it. at all. Shouting Gabi, Gabi, like that. It reminds me of uh, producers and directors of movies trying to recreate that atmosphere for a movie. Can't be done. This is the real thing. <laughs> and again, Sabatini ahead. It's a heady time for players applauded week in and week out Sabatini by crowds in their tens of thousands, like they're here tonight. 3-1, Sabatini. Listen to this. Thank you. Quiet, please. Davis Cup stuff, really. Mm -hmm. Germany against Argentina tonight. Argentina being the hometown. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Yeah. Number 15. She guesses wrong, she gets passed, but so Quiet, what? Take please. a look at Three this again. Here. She Thank comes you, in the net. Look at this move to the right. No hesitation in there. It's not like she thought about it for a moment. It was a natural move, and then the overhead for the winner to follow. 
Is that developable, you think, for, for Graf? Yeah, if she does it a lot. Well, that's exactly right. Sabatini break points. This match has turned around completely. Leads we suspected that might happen. She'll serve when we come back after this break. <laughs> Ryan, what's your sense of how you're going to cut this thing? It's a real pity we've got to cut it up. We do. What, what on earth is on at 3 o'clock this morning? No, there'll probably be like a coffee or something. Oh, yeah, God, something really? Like All right. Huh? Mm, 8.30, probably. You want to come over? Well, I'll, I'll see you there. What do you want to give me? Okay, so I'll give you a call when I'm ready. I'll just give you a call when I'm ready and we'll go. Break there. of service was, was right okay. away. What are we doing? Promo or anything? What? What are we doing? Okay. Time. Well, you'd never do. I should produce, then we'd know what we were doing. <laughs> Cliff Drys there with Mary Carilla. This has been a tremendous match. We're in the third set. It's Greb Graf and Sabatini in the semi-final of the women's singles. We're at Lipton 92 on Key Biscayne. First set to Groff, 6-3. Second set, tiebreaker, Sabatini. And now it's four games to one. Two breaks of serve, Sabatini serving. Two games from the match. Third set for Sabatini, haven't they? Only one unforced error. This really has become a remarkable replay of last year's semifinal match between these two players. We're stepping up, up a set and two points from the match in the tiebreaker. And after losing that, 8 6 went away entirely in set three, losing it 6 1. She won this uh, set if she won at 6 1, which is quite possible. There'd be two games different, no, three games difference between this year and the last. Because Groff won the first set 6 11 last time. Oh. 30 15. Taylor on the case still after a long match, two hours and 20 minutes. Remarkable angle from there to do that. One handed topspin shot for a winner. 40, 15. I mean, it's uh, the uh, high part of the net, too, but of course, she's got so much topspin. Look at this. 
Firm wrist at contact point. See that? Now, what's the follow through here? She goes through. It looks like a loose twisted shot because of that. You see, at the end of the swing, she lets the wrist go, but not while she's making contact with the ball. Sabatini leads 5-1. It's a soccer crowd here tonight. Ready for play, please. The Thank fans you. from Argentina cheering Fire Gabriela leaders. Sabatini, waiting for almost inevitably Fire Sabatini leaders. in the final it will be Arancha Sanchez Vicario. about it. 15, 30. So I lost Kiermaier watching. There's a replay again, Sabatini. This is the cross-court passing shot now. Steffi Graf, and she looks at this one and says, oh, I can't believe she hit this one. Now I cannot miss. In the air. Oh. And she made contact with it. a few tonight, especially in the first set when Graf was hitting with such power, but now Sabatini 15, is 30. seeing those tennis balls like they were soccer balls from Argentina. Match point. Second set. Gabriela Sabatini, of course, is taking her time. Double fault on match point, reminiscent of the Sellers double fault against Jennifer Capriati in the quarterfinals. And Capriati lost today earlier against Arancha Sanchez Vacari, who's in the final, and she will take on Gabriela Sabatini for the prize. 
Lipton 92 Women's Singles Champion on Saturday. We'll be back.